Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to discuss variable selection. So we've already been through all the other videos, we've done data cleaning and processing, and by this point you should have basically divided your data um, into a development sample and an out of time sample. If you don't know what that is, basically data is split into two parts, it's typically 80-20. 80% uh, of the data is used to create a model or develop your model on, and then 20% is typically uh, taken out and it's kind of like the out of time testing, so the OOT sample. So the variable selection is definitely the most important part of the entire model development process. And like we've seen, we've done the uh, model structure kind of selection, and now we're gonna get into the variable selection. Don't think this is like a hard defined process. Uh, so many times you do variable selection, you might go back and change your model type or model structure. You might go back and look at other things in the data and you might come full circle and have to go back and forth between different steps to get more or less the best model. So I'm going to throw out this warning here again as I drive this home constantly, but see people don't take it seriously. A model is an approximation to reality. It is not a calculation. So just to summarize that really quick, Models are not exact science. When you build a model, it will fail eventually, or it will do an average job at predicting things, but it's not going to give you an exact answer. You're always going to have an error because you are approximating something in reality. It is not calculating. Calculating something is an exact science. So two plus two equals four is a calculation all day, every day, it does not change, it's a calculation. Uh, a variable in a model and using a model approximates something and you're always gonna have an error, you're either over or under predicting. So anyways, let's get back to the variable selection. So to start with, you're going to be building a model for somebody, some user, the model user. And so you need to have a deep discussion with them exactly what the model is going to be used for and talk about different features within the model. Far too often I see developers just run out there and blindly build a model and it does okay. And then someone such as myself is a model validation or someone like myself looks at some cool model out there online and says, you know, hey, can I make this better? And all I have to do is like take two seconds to think about the problem, figure out what are we trying to model, add a few things and my model's better. The reason is, is that the person that built the original model did not start at the beginning and think about what is the model used for? Why is it being used? What's important? What type of things do you need in your model? And so having this deep discussion with the model user is crucial to give you an understanding of what variables could be used in the model or should be in the model. So I like to actually sit down with the model user and ask them a bunch of questions. For example, they know of any trends or seasonality, they know of any segmentation that should be occurring. Are there any variables that they would more or less want to see in the model? Are there variables that they think should be in the model? And we can look at those and test those, but at least they'll give me an idea of what they think as being an expert in the model use. So now there's basically two steps in the variable selection process, I guess kind of three. It's variable reduction reduction, variable selection, and then testing. And so for variable reduction, uh, typically cluster analysis is done, is what it does, it takes different variables, uh, it groups them by correlation within these sets of variables. So a whole bunch of data is one variable, but it takes the correlation between the different groups and puts them all together. Uh, one example that SAS uses, so I went to the SAS forum in 2015. Uh, I like to use SAS, I also like R and Python. But anyways, in SAS, there is a procedure called PROC bar plus, and this will actually do the clusters for you. It gives you lots of output. You can analyze it and figure out how many clusters you need. Um, you can do a marginal cluster analysis. So depending on how many groups you add, the first group should add the most value. Second group should add a little bit more, and then third, fourth, fifth, and it'll get smaller and smaller until you hit like an asymptotic value. Uh, just to note, it does not matter what the asymptote is. So it explains 30%, 80%, 90%, whatever, but you'll never hit 100% because that would be a calculation, not a model. So at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna discuss how I do variable selection. I have not seen it in academia. I've not seen it in books. I'm sure many people will cringe on the way I actually do this but I think it is more productive and a better value, but I'll put that at the end of this video. So once you have your variables narrowed down, and this is crucial because some models in some instances you'll have thousands and thousands of variables and you're trying to build a model, and so doing that a cluster analysis will get you down to a reasonable amount or at least different groups to look at. So when you get into the variable selection itself, there's basically two kind of methods for doing it. Uh, one is using an automated approach and two is just using logic. 
So I prefer the logic method when you have not very many variables, you can mentally think through it, you can build different models, you can add and take out different variables, and you can consider which ones should and shouldn't be in the model. You can look at model fit and you can look at multicollinearity. The three most popular methods for doing a variable selection in an automated fashion is forward selection, backward selection, and stepwise. And so forward selection is where you start with no variables, you add in one variable at a time, it calculates the F statistic, and it has some threshold on if it's going to keep or reject that variable. And so then forward selection takes all these variables and adds them in until it hits some value or goes through all the variables, and that's your final variable selection. Uh, backward selection is where you take a model and you add all the variables, and then you basically go backwards and use like an F statistic to take out variables until you get down to something that has a good model fit or some other good criteria for a final model. So stepwise selection is a combination of forward and backward selection. Uh, it originally starts with a forward selection by adding variables, and then it will reanalyze the variables in the model and try to drop them using a backward selection method. So these types of auto selection are very common. They use basically a threshold or some criteria for keeping or dropping variables. Uh, another example is that in R, you have the auto.arima function and it will build you a model in Arima. <laughs> the reason I air quote this in general is that most practitioners who actually build models for a living and are very good at it will use these different automated variable selection techniques and then they'll go back to the model user or the conversation they had, and they'll logically narrow down different variables that should and shouldn't be in the model. So there is no criteria of logic being applied when you use these different auto selection methods for variables. And so this creates more or less crappy automated models. And like nine out of 10 times, I can go in, talk to the model user, and then build you a better model than what you built with the automated function. So please do not use these blindly. These are just a tool to kind of give you an idea of the model selection. Go back and look at the model usage and try to figure out other things that you can add into the model. So should the model be segmented? Um, should you add in different variables that aren't you know, very correlated or they don't have very good multicollinearity? but do they make sense to be in the model? Uh, something else I haven't discussed, when you do the data creation, the data cleaning, uh, you can create variations of these variables. So for example, looking at a variable versus looking at the growth rate of the variable. Does the growth rate make more sense in the model or does the raw variable make more sense in the model? There's different reasons to choose transformations of these variables, and so you should consider these as alternatives to the raw variable itself, especially if there's logic involved in using that variable. And then the third step is more or less when you have this variable selection process, you wanna look at multicollinearity. So one thing to look at is the variance inflation factor, which is the VIF. Uh, this looks at the multicollinearity between the variables, and so you don't want a high VIF. You don't want there to be high multicollinearity. You can use the VIF as well to drop variables. So when you do like an automated process of variable selection, it might have say 20 variables. You can go in, set some threshold that you would like. So say example, a value of three, and then you can go in and trim out all the variables that have a VIF greater than three. Uh, when you do this though, you might consider that you have to go back and do variable selection in the automated fashion or refit these models. So if you drop two variables at a time or three or four variables, all these values are gonna change. The F statistic's going to change, the model fit's going to change, uh, something that was relevant or statistically significant may no longer be statistically significant when you drop other variables. So this is kind of a loop. Once you check it and do all your model variable selection, then you check your VIF, for example, and you need to go back to the variable selection process, rerun the model, relook at the model fit and see how it fits, see if the variables are statistically significant by looking at the p-values, and then kind of go through the cycle over and over again, but it usually doesn't take too much time. And like I mentioned, model fit is another criteria to look at. So the model fit, I would use the adjusted R squared, the residual mean squared error, the RMSE, or the MAPE, the mean absolute percentage error. And these are all great values for actually looking at the model fit and seeing how well it fits. Again, it's crucial not to overfit the model. I can't drive this home enough, especially in time series and ARIMA models. People overfit models to the nth degree, it has great fit, and they forecast one or two periods and it fails because you did a horrible job at considering model fit as a key issue of the model. And again, we use the development period and the out of time period as a way to prevent this overfitting. So we only develop it on one set, we fit this, and then we test it on the out of time sample to see how the model performs. 
So now quickly the method I use to do variable selection, which is not accepted in industry, I have not seen anyone else use it, is more or less I go in and I look at, A, I do the automated methods, I do variable selection, I usually use the forward selection, or at least stepwise, and I consider all the different variables and have kind of says one kind of like a challenger model or like a benchmark model, if you would call it that. Then is what I go in and do is I create a correlogram. So I take all the different variables that I have that I want to use for the model. Um, I look at the dependent variable and I see what the correlation is in them. So you're going to end up with one column. Um, one row for each variable, and then the top is going to be the dependent variable. And you go down and look at it, and I just create a rule such as if correlation is greater than uh, 70%, uh, keep it. If it's less than 70%, get rid of it. And then I go ahead and I fit these into the model. I look at the model itself. I use the stepwise regression again, but only on these variables. Then I go back and look at the model fit itself, and I look at the residuals. So now the residuals should be white noise, should be normally distributed. But the issue is, is a lot of times you have a pattern. So what do I do? I build this model, I use logic to build it, I use correlations to build it, and then I go back to the very beginning, uh, I look at the residuals and I check to see what the residuals are correlated with on all of the variables. So not just the 0.7 that I took out to start with, I look at all the variables. The reason I do this and the reason I like doing it this way is because A, correlations between the dependent and other variables might not be very high. However, something might be a small adjustment. You might require to have this to make it better. And that's basically how I do it though. I look at the residuals, I look at the correlations, I use stepwise as well, but I create this kind of cycle of me using correlations, checking residuals, uh, going back and forth and looking at the model fit and the multicollinearity as well as other key characteristics or things that you want in your model or tests you should check depending on the model structure. So that's kind of it guys. I hope that's helpful in the model selection. I hope this gives you kind of a springboard or a starting point to get going on the variable selection. But this is very crucial, it's very technical. There's no easy way to do variable selection. Uh, don't go out there and just use like automated functions like stepwise or auto rema and just blindly do it. Because I've seen again, time and time again, people do this and your models suck. Uh, you're a horrible developer if you do this and don't check anything. Uh, try adding some logic in there. Talk to model users, or better yet, talk to other model developers who have done this and see what they say. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.